against New York, this was an unusual case where the state proceeded against one man first and then went back and tried another man, my client, Mr. Hemphill. There was a shooting in 2006 in April and people had identified Nick Morris as the people who were responsible for the shooting. The state proceeded to trial against Nick Morris, but a mistrial was declared after opening statements in that case. Years later, the state decided to proceed and change its theory and say that Mr. Hempel was the shooter. And at that trial, Mr. Hempel predictably said, you had it right the first time. Nick Morris was the person who was the shooter. And so the state offered these plea minutes from previously ascertained by the state to rebut that defense, Mr. Hemphill's defense, that Mr. Morris was the shooter. Nick Morris, by the time of Mr. Hemphill's trial, was no longer in the United States, so he was never available to testify at the trial. But the fact that he wasn't available to testify really brings up the central concern of the Confrontation Clause. The question presented was whether or under what circumstances a criminal defendant can open the door to testimonial hearsay. So um, that implicates two conflicting evidentiary principles. The first is the right to confront the witnesses against you, which is in the Sixth Amendment and guaranteed in the Sixth Amendment. The competing principle at issue here was the evidentiary issue that under certain circumstances, a party can open the door to responsive, relevant evidence. So the issue in this case was whether, by asserting a defense that somebody else did the crime, that Morris, the first person who was prosecuted for the crime, was the actual shooter, whether the defense, Mr. Hemphill, opened the door to Morris's essential sworn denial of his culpability in this case. Our argument was that a criminal defendant can never waive the right to confrontation. And that's a very broad-based position. The Confrontation Clause is part of the original Bill of Rights. It is really one of the most fundamental rights accorded to a criminal defendant. The right to question an accuser, to face an accuser, to question through cross-examination. The evidence presented by the prosecution, the state, is really the chief mechanism through which reliability is determined relating to evidence. What the state said was that First, we had not adequately presented this constitutional claim to the state courts, and so therefore the Supreme Court should not address the claim in the first instance. Then there were the state's arguments on the merits, which said that courts need to have the ability to govern the truth-finding function of a trial, and that the opening the door doctrine allows the courts to do that and that by raising this third-party defense, Mr. Hemphill and the defense opened the door to the response of evidence, even though it was testimonial hearsay. So this was an eight-to-one decision in favor of the defense. It was Justice Sotomayor who wrote the opinion, and her rule was that a criminal defendant does not open the door by presenting a third-party defense, by saying somebody else did it. She really relied on the court's previous rulings in Crawford that really set forth the rules about how testimonial hearsay cannot be admissible in consistent with the Confrontation Clause. And then Justice Thomas did not believe that the question before the court was adequately litigated in the New York State Court of Appeals to permit the Supreme Court to pass on it. I think they have said what they meant and meant what they said. And what they've said is that the Sixth Amendment guarantees the right to question and confront your accusers, and they've stood pretty firmly by that rule. A criminal defendant does not open the door to testimonial hearsay merely by presenting a defense that somebody else was responsible for the crime. Mm -hmm.